Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2, where John Cole and I get to sit down with Dr. Liz Lister and share with our audience stuff about our health. This is a lot, a lot like a personal consultation, Dr. Liz. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's why I look forward to it. But of course, we share information with our audience, and it's always great information. I have what might be a dumb question for you. Um, I just went to give blood, not give blood, but to get my blood tested. I went to the lab, and, and they drew blood to, for testing for the doctor. Yeah. About a week before that, I went and got a, a COVID test, and they took a swab. Right. So which is, I guess they did that in my nose, but nose, saliva, whatever they do. And then, of course, there's urine samples um, that sometimes a doctor wants. So my question is, what's the difference between these three? Is one better than the other? And if they really cared, wouldn't they want me to give all three samples at any given time to test the whole array of whatever it is they're testing for? Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that makes very good sense. Well, that's exactly right. There are lots of ways to do different kinds of lab testing. Uh, blood testing is the most common. Probably people listening are agreeing and had blood drawn at one time or another. Uh, and that's kind of central to our medical system, at least here in the US. And it's easy to do. It's not necessarily fun to have your blood drawn, but it's easy to get all the tests done. Uh, one visit to the lab in a few minutes, and then it's done. And you can really run a, quite a large number of tests that way. Because it's part of our system, it's also usually covered on people's insurance or health insurance. So that's related to the whole our whole discussion. You mentioned saliva testing. Uh, now swab testing, that's particular to these kinds of tests. When you're looking for a respiratory tract illness, you're going to go in the respiratory tract to look for it. But more common than that is going to be urine testing. Also, probably those of you listening have had urine tests done at one time or another. And that's also very useful, not only for urinary tract infections, but also looking at other concerns in the body, calcium, kidney stones, other markers that we can look for in the urine. Uh, and that is also, of course, it's not as pain, no pain in giving a urine sample as compared to getting your blood drawn. Uh, and then saliva testing. Saliva testing is also still around pretty popular, particularly for hormone testing, which of course is what I do the most of in terms of the tests that I order. Kind so, of so, but, but saliva yeah. testing for hormones, that's kind of, that's kind of an interesting uh, uh, thought. Um, uh, why wouldn't um, a blood testing be the kind of thing that you'd want for, uh, it just seemed to me that the hormone testing would be a blood kind of thing as opposed to saliva. How does that, why is it saliva uh, more uh, agreeable for, for that? Yes, absolutely. That's an excellent question. And also urine testing, in particular, a collection, what they call a 24 hour urine collection, which is not easy to do to collect your urine for 24 hours. So we'll come back to that. But first, let me answer your question. It's an excellent question. Blood testing, I normally do start with blood testing, even though it is just a moment in time. Okay. Whereas with saliva testing, for example, saliva testing is especially good for checking cortisol. We have talked about cortisol here on this show. Cortisol varies throughout the day. It has a circadian rhythm. It's highest when we wake up and then it goes down over the course of the day. That is something that makes it very amenable to doing saliva testing. Because that you can have the little the little plastic vials 
and you can do a saliva sample into the vial. You can do it when you wake up, you can do it later in the morning, you can do it in the middle of the day, you can do it in the evening. Depending on exactly what we're looking for, uh, you can check it anywhere from four to six times over the course uh, of a day. So you can see a pattern. And these are things people can do themselves and then just send the tubes in without the counter Exactly, exactly. The only reason I don't do more saliva testing on my patients is only because the insurance doesn't usually cover it. And I can usually tell a lot from getting a pinpoint measurement, for example, of fasting morning cortisol, just for that example. And then I can combine it with the patient history. If they tell me how they're feeling throughout the day, throughout the night, I can often combine that. If we're not figuring something out and not helping the person get good sleep or something else is going on, then sometimes I'll order the saliva circadian testing so I can check it throughout the day. That's an example of where saliva testing can be helpful. Hmm. Well, this is all good to know. Yeah. There's one more piece. And again, a little bit more technical. Hormones run around in our body. Some of the hormone is bound to a protein called a binding globulin. Okay, and so you've got, let's say, testosterone. It's floating around the body, bound to the binding globulin. However, there will also be some that isn't bound, and that's the free testosterone. For example, there's other hormones that do this. So saliva testing can be helpful because it will measure the free amount of the hormone rather than the total. So the free mm -hmm. hormone is what's available for the cells to really use and to get the, the effect and the benefits mm -hmm. of the particular hormone. Wow. Well, that's why you're a doctor and I just give blood. That's all right? I do. Right, right, exactly. The, uh, the last one is the 24-hour urine collection. Mm. That's, again, that's a really good way to measure hormones in particular. Uh, it is measuring that available amount. However, it's also giving you an idea of total production because a lot of, uh, not just hormones, but also, for example, calcium, right? My mom is going through that at this time. Uh, collecting urine for 24 hours. So that is what exactly what it sounds like. You have to, every time that you pee, you have to collect it into a big jug. And then at the end of the 24 hours, you've got the total amount. However, you don't send the lab the large jug. They don't want the big jug of urine. You <laughs> have to put some into a, a smaller vial. And then you've got an averaged amount over that whole 24 hours. Uh -huh. That's another good way to do a lot of measurements. Hers, for example, is for calcium. She's having that measured. Uh, however, it's also a great way to do uh, measurements of melatonin, for example. We know that fluctuates throughout the day. So that gives a good idea, uh, as well as the hormones and the hormone metabolites, the products that the hormones convert into. So really yeah. can get a lot of information. Again, not that easy to do and usually not covered on insurance, depending on what it's for. Hmm. Well, they're all important tools for exactly. a doctor's analysis. That's exactly right. We're what we're Thank you. For. We need different tools. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.